The Fallout franchise makes up some of my favorite games, especially once I've added tons of mods to them. After spending hundreds of hours in Fallout 4, I wanted to put myself to the test and see if it's possible to turn Minecraft into something that resembles a Fallout game. I'm basing this video around Forge for Minecraft 1.16.5, and if you want to play with this pack, make sure to check out the links in the description below. I started with Vault Pack, which is a resource pack that introduces lots of new 3D models, like these bookshelves and crafting tables, which have a few different variants. Chests have also been changed so they look like steamer trunks, and the furnace has all the clutter you'd normally expect to find. Jukeboxes have been turned into radios, torches look like lamps, and campfires have been transformed into flaming barrels. Even the brewing stand has been turned into nuka cola machines, and cauldrons into bathtubs, so right away you're going to start noticing changes everywhere. For further decoration, the pack allows you to place down some other Fallout-related items. Tripwires will become terminals, a smoker becomes a damaged oven, and a barrel now looks like a safe. The camps from Fallout 76 are introduced, and they can be seen whenever you place down a beacon and have some cool emissive textures. If you use an invisible item frame pack, then you can place down mini nukes, notebooks, fusion cores, and bottle caps. One of my favorite additions is the introduction of the workshops, which look awesome. The anvil, chipped anvil, and damaged anvil have been turned into a workshop, armor workbench, and weapons workbench instead, and the grindstone has been turned into the tinker's workbench. Some more interesting changes come to plants, Tulips have been turned into different skeletons instead, so you can place them down or come across them naturally. Other ferns and bushes have been turned into power armor and power armor frames, but stumbling across these in your naturally generated world might look odd, so you might want to remove these instead. The appearance of armor has changed completely. After leather, there's chainmail, which is designed to look like synth equipment. Iron still exists as a normal tier, but gold has been turned into NCR armor instead. The final two tiers, which are diamond and netherite, are now combat armor and marine armor instead, which feels lore friendly. When it comes to weapons, you can fire the bow, which looks and sounds like a laser rifle, and some other weapons included are the gauss rifle, super sledge, power fist, and death claw gauntlet. The totem of undying is going to look like a 3D psycho too. Illager themed mobs like pillagers, evokers, vindicators, and ravengers have all been given a raider overhaul. Skeletons make pretty convincing synths with new sounds, especially because they fire rifles now. The best change of all comes to wolves, who should definitely be tamed because they look exactly like dog meat. I think that covers most when it comes to this pack, but there's a few other minor details. For the main Minecraft textures, we're going to go with the Fallout Paradise resource pack, which is also available on Planet Minecraft but you can go with any pack that gives a post-apocalyptic vibe. It's just that this one was updated relatively recently, and it is themed around Fallout already, so it's a win-win. You're going to want to load this before Vault Pack, as you don't want to lose all those new 3D models. But that's not to say that this pack doesn't offer some new models either, as I found quite a few. Rails, for example, are changed a lot to look more apocalyptic. Different colored carpets are changed into some styles of rubble, which can be good for world decoration, and a few walls are turned into these cool-looking rails. I think another few noteworthy changes are doors, which fit the theme much better and have some 3D effects, as well as dies, which look like different ammunition boxes. The pack features connected textures in lots of places, with some of the best changes coming when you place planks together, which can make them look weathered. There are a few incompatibilities with these two texture packs, Occasionally, blocks might overwrite each other, but it doesn't take away from the theme we're going for at all. The final texture pack that I'm going to install is Player Villager Models. It will change the appearance of your villagers so they look more human-like, and so they resemble settlers instead. They'll have arms too, as well as player-like breathing animations and random textures. There are a few ways we can play with this pack. The first is by using a custom-made map, which will be wasted in this case. It's a large post-apocalyptic themed map, which is still in development and is available for Minecraft 1.16.5. The map is huge, and it will take a long time to actually explore it. It's going to be split up into three different regions, which are the Lowlands, Midlands, and Badlands. In each of these regions are plenty of discoverable locations, such as the prison, bridge, city, pier, airport, and so much more. It's easy to get lost in the map, and so far the builds are looking really great and professional, 
Because the map is still in development, you probably shouldn't expect to get a full experience out of it right now, as a lot of areas, especially buildings, are waiting to receive content, as many interiors are blank. But still, this is definitely worth looking into and keeping up to date on any progress that's made by the developers. Alternatively, you might want to stick to a vanilla Minecraft world, so that you can still play like normal with the goal of reaching the end. In that case, there's quite a few mods I'd recommend. The first mod to help with world building is the Lost Cities. It's completely customizable so you can choose how rare you want cities to be and how destroyed they should look. It really helps with building the post-apocalyptic theme we're going for. A lot of the buildings are empty in design, but you can still search them for loot and come across lots of enemies you'll have to defeat. It also features large highways and subway systems, like in Fallout. When you create a new world, you're going to need to enable the Lost Cities manually and choose a preset you like. I personally like to go for rarer cities, which are mostly destroyed. Newer versions of Lost Cities actually allow you to use other biome mods along it now, and the first one that goes with Fallout's lore is Desolation. In Fallout, most of the world has collapsed, especially by bombs. Desolation introduces the Charred Forest biome, which has a few different variants. You'll need to craft some protective equipment to navigate through the biome without receiving debuffs, which are the goggles and mask. Structure-wise, it's best starting with Young's Bridges. Whenever you come across a river in your world, there's now a chance for a bridge to spawn, creating a crossing. These mods are going to help create a sense of human activity in your world, and quite a lot of bridge styles in the mod are broken too, which fits. Our first Fallout theme mod is Fallout-inspired Power Armor. It brings in five sets of power armor, which are the T-45, the T-51, the X-01, X02 and X03. To get started with the mod, you'll need to find abandoned power armor, which is buried in the ground, and you'll have better luck finding it by crafting a tracker. When you dig it up, it will need to be repaired using steel before it's usable. Power armor can only be used when you're wearing an armor frame, and they'll require a fusion core to power them. The mod also includes a dungeon, which feels like a vault, as it's used for human experiments. You can find an entrance on the surface, and when you head down, you'll find a lab that has been overrun with raiders. Work your way through the facility, defeat hostile mobs, and collect any loot that you come across. You can even find a set of power armor down here. The final thing worth mentioning is that there's a companion system too. If you come across the companion, you can befriend them with items like meat. If they join you, then you can equip them with weapons and armor so they can travel alongside you. There's also Fallout Wasteland. Its main content is a new dimension, which you'll be asked if you want to teleport to when the game starts. For now, I'd say no, simply because structures and biomes from other mods don't spawn here, and the mod is still a work in progress. But it's still worth mentioning because the mod includes a lot of other noteworthy items from the series. It's also the mod that will cause you to start out the game with a vault suit and a pit boy. One downside to this mod is that it does bring in custom creatures like ghouls, super mutants, bloatflies, and even robo-brain. But most don't spawn naturally in the vanilla world, only in the dimension included by this mod. You can have a robo-brain by creating the package block and breaking it. You can use foods of the Mojave to introduce some more Fallout-themed items. There are some different foods like cram, sugar bombs, instamash, dandy boy apples, and more. And you can receive some different effects when you consume them. There are some medicine-styled items too, like Buff Out and Jet, which might give more extreme effects instead. All of these items have crafting recipes. Better Weather will introduce seasons into Minecraft, which adds a new element of survival. During the seasons, mechanics like crop growth rate and whether animals are able to breed will be changed. But the feature we want most is the new weather events. One of them is Acid Rain, which probably makes sense in our post-apocalyptic radiation-filled world. It's a random event, and when it does happen, it can injure the player, mobs, and even destroy crops. But other weather events include blizzards, clouds, and light rain. Some mods that bring more life to villagers are villager names, which assigns a random name from a list of thousands to each villager. Giving them a name makes villagers feel more like settlers. I also use guard villagers, who will be equipped with Fallout-themed armor and weapons, 
thanks to resource packs, and they'll keep the ghouls away. But their textures aren't changed by the player villager model's resource pack. The stables mod adds the large barn structure to your world, which you might find in the plains biome. I like to think of it as a random encounter in the sense of Fallout. If you head inside, you'll find lots of horses, one of which you could tame. But there's also a stable master here who will trade some different items, with some being horse related for your hard earned bottle caps. Valhelsia Structures is another mod which adds some RPG like structures. It's a good addition to this pack because it adds some different ruins, most notably the castle and tower ruins. If you come across the forge, then you'll feel like you've stumbled into a settler's home, who you can trade with or loot their stuff. Or you can look for the player house instead, which makes a great location to call home as it's already set up with lots of supplies and blocks you might need, including a perfectly preserved pie. Dogmeat is pretty smart, so we can replicate that using doggy talents. You'll need to feed a dog a training treat to get started, which you can craft. When you interact with a dog while holding a stick, you'll see this window where you can train your dog to do a lot of different abilities, like warning you when creepers are nearby, being able to catch fish, or even increase the inventory size. You can also change the texture index, which essentially allows you to change the dog's breed. There's also food bowls, beds, trackers, and more. Don't forget about RPGZ. When a creature dies, its body will be left behind, which you'll then have to search to collect the loot, just like Fallout. Regrowth adds a few mechanics, with the first being that animals will eat plants and fertilize areas to encourage regrowth. But the main feature that we want is the changes that come to villages, which will feel like settlements. Now the settlers will work on improving their settlement as over time, they'll fix the roads to remove obstructions, place down torches to prevent mobs spawning, and start building protective walls to keep out any intruders. Weapons-wise, I've chosen to install the Guns, Rockets, and Atomic Explosions mod. These aren't very lore-friendly, but it's better than nothing. It includes different snipers, rifles, submachine guns, rocket launchers, pistols, and grenades. There is atomic bombs, at least if you're wanting to craft the next megaton, and it creates an awesome mushroom cloud. The guns require ammunition, and some have scopes, which is useful. I've also installed Bountiful. When you go to a village, you might find a bounty board. If you interact with it, then you can see different tasks, which are similar to quests. You'll be asked to collect certain items or kill different mobs to receive rewards, which could even be bottle caps. I think that covers everything. I want to showcase a little bit more of the pack now, to show some of the places you might discover or things you might do, but I hope you enjoyed the video.